crazy to think there's other vampire films out there except Twilight and The Lost Boys, right? Reside ergo in nomine patris et filius spiritus sancti. Vampire. First, I will save your soul. Then, I will destroy you. Iconic film director George A. Romero is well known for his zombie series, but hidden within his filmography, he actually made a vampire movie too, released the same year as his masterpiece, Dawn of the Dead. Wanna know something cool? This was the first film to pair Tom Savini and George Romero together, a legendary coupling that would gift us some of the best gore effects to grace cinema. So good! Martin was another victim of the video nasty era that banned home media of the movie. The plot follows a young man, named Martin, who believes he's a vampire, and his uncle treats him as such. Martin is compelled to kill, but his uncle demands he learn to live amongst humans and not murder anyone in his town. If he does, he threatens to drive a stake through his heart. The movie focuses on Martin and all the people around him, and despite him being so ruthless, you want to see him overcome his bloodlust and live a normal life. Don't be afraid. You'll just go to sleep. I don't have to hurt you now. <laughs> You'll be all right. You'll be all right. The film is very coy and never outright explains things. It's all up to the audience's personal perceptions. For instance, Martin will have visions of religious iconography and mobs with torches implying they are chasing something down hundreds of years in the past. But whether these are real or just Martin's fantasies are up for the viewer to decide. I don't know. The people in Martin's life also have different approaches towards his condition. His uncle wards him off with old world vampire tricks and threatens him, whereas his cousin believes he should be sent for treatment at a mental hospital. The film never outright tells us if he is a vampire or not, so who knows which one's correct? It's just a costume. It's a much more realistic take on how a young vampire would behave. With Martin stumbling through his various killings awkwardly and having to sedate his victims with drugs when feeding off them in order to avoid a fight or cause a scene. It all begs the question, is he really a vampire or merely a confused, disturbed boy who drinks blood? It all feels really genuine. It's a somber, quiet movie. It reminded me of something like This Is England that just happens to have a vampire in it. This sense of realism makes the shocking moments more impactful. It's almost as though you're watching a snuff film at times due to how quiet and cold it can feel. <laughs> the film's biggest strength is that it's never predictable. There's plenty of twists and turns that would make otherwise standard scenes of horror fresh and exciting. Just when I believed I had an idea about where the film was going, suddenly a new development would throw me out of whack and I wasn't sure what was coming next. For instance, Martin becomes a hit on a local radio show and gets dubbed the Count. I never believed throughout the movie that sort of thing would happen, but here we are. I mean, it's kind of cool, but it doesn't make me feel any better though. Also, for a film with Romero and Savini at the helm, the violence is much more pared back than you'd think. There's blood, but there aren't too many death highlights. Following the style of the rest of the film, it's grounded in reality, and Martin's approach to feeding doesn't lend itself to showcase any big gore moments. Martin is an intense viewing experience for horror enthusiasts, and is one of the more original vampire flicks out there. If you're into the genre, I highly recommend you check it out. There's a 60 Chevy. Yes, it's.